He gives us a set of measures, does what no other minister of finance has ever done, ad lib. Well, I could ad lib up here because I'm not making law, but I would never be so mad as to ad lib on tax measures because when the minister of finance speaks in a budget, his words in relation to tax measures become law as soon as they come out of his mouth. And they become law for 90 days until the government can bring the legislation to Parliament to continue the tax measures. But this man brings a set of hodgepodge lucky dip measures that are not grounded in taking Barbados somewhere. But they are grounded in making an arithmetical sum add up. However which way, whoever else suffers, whatever else happens. Because as you heard from Kerry tonight, they have done a deal with the IDB in Washington. And the only way they can get the money is by proving that they're at least trying to make an effort. Now, if you have to cut in a household, are you going to cut in a way to hurt your children? Are you going to cut in a way to hurt your husband? The first thing you do is to say, what can I do that will not harm my husband or my children? And if you're a man, my wife or my children. And if you have a mother, your mother that you're taking care of. And what is it that matters in this house? Because that man is not going to go out there and thief if thiefing is against his morals. So what he wants to do is to protect the values that he and his family believe in while at the same time making the adjustments. And the Barbados Labour Party is clear, my friends. We are in a serious situation. And we know that there has to be adjustment. We're not fooling anybody. We told the country that before last election. It was the Thames. Who told you that all was stable? We told the country we knew that serious and difficult decisions had to be made. Sinclair admits that there is no confidence in the Barbados economy. Now when a man tells you that the very economy that he is in charge of, the very economy that he is responsible for making work, not last year, but since 2010, that is what you call a confession from the dock. It is a confession from the dock that all that he has been doing has added up to naught, has failed. And I am saying to you that in other countries, he would have had to resign. But let us move on. And I trust and pray that Frandel will realize that there is no economic solution to a loss of confidence. The only solution is a political solution. And that is to move the man that has brought us into this dismal situation rather than let him continue to preside over the Barbadian economy and for more confidence to leave. We started last week against the background of sectors, agriculture down, manufacturing down, International business down, construction down, tourism down. The only thing that has grown in this country is the waistline of the front edge. That's the only thing that has grown. And we expect it therefore, because Barbadians are nervous, Barbadians are anxious. Barbadians felt in their pockets and in their lives long before Delisle World or Chris Sinclair deigned to admit to them that there was a problem. Barbadians had already felt it. And when we expected, therefore, a government to come and lead from in front, what we got was a bunch of lucky dip measures 
pulled not with the objective of putting Barbados on track to growth, but with the objective of stabilizing while protecting the interests of the Democratic Labour Party. And why do I say that? From 2008, we told David Thompson, you cannot tax an economy back to growth. 208, 209, 210, 11, 12. We told them that this economy needed to grow, that you needed to put oxygen back in the economy. You needed to put money in people's pockets to get spending going again. Because we know how Bajans behave. If you have a capital program and people working on construction sites, they go and they take their money. And on a Friday evening, they hold a little drink. They might not drink as much as before. And then they hold some money for the children's mother. And the money spends from the shop to the supermarket to all about. But this government insisted not on developing and spending money to build capacity entities that would hire people in the future like we did with the seaport and the airport and schools and all of that this government insisted on spending money that you couldn't get back dead money so that when you spend money on wages the money gone it did as Sinclair took pride in telling this country last year that he was borrowing money to pay 7,000 public servants. Now, how much ever you want to employ people, it's not sustainable. It's not. And if you can pay somebody to come had the downgrade last year, that was the first sign that the rest of the world was telling us, your house not in order. Trump. Fix it. Trump. Your house is not in order. Trump. And that you cannot continue to borrow as if there's no tomorrow. But they didn't know that there was something called an election coming up. And that election meant that the Democratic Labour Party that Sandy Fred told us would never commit political suicide. But party before country. And therefore, all was stable. All was stable until the first inklings of truth emerged in April of this year when the governor of the central bank told us that the medium term strategy needed to be put back on track. And then by June, you were being told that instead of a $600 stimulus, you now had to have a 400 million adjustment in eight months. No longer 600 million stimulus. And that the deficit was too big. You know, I almost asked Chris on Tuesday, in the words of Cooper Dam, but you know I can't sing. I would have had to ask him, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. How your deficit gets abroad. But Kerry mentioned to me that it really wasn't the deficit I should be talking about. It was the stimulus. And I said to Kerry, but then I would have to ask how your stimulus gets so small. <laughs> but the point I'm making is this. That for the first time in June, we now knew we had to make a 400 million adjustment in eight months. And that no sector in this country was performing. Tourism, the worst it has ever been. The only country that did worse in tourism last year than Barbados was a country where two-thirds of the population had to be evacuated. Montserrat. And then this year, as if last year was not bad enough, down to the end of July, 
tourism down 7%. And as if that wasn't bad enough, at the height of COP over, when people coming home to shit, a waste, tourism numbers down 8%. Percent in the first nine days of August. Richard Seeley told you that the planes were coming in full, but he didn't tell you that the planes were smaller. 